Hi everyone! Welcome to our 15th episode of the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show. My name is Julio. I am the dream alchemist at Ruthless Painters and I'm going to be the host of this uh, episode 15. Um, so as an introduction, uh, the Ruthless Dog and Pony Show is a live, unedited uh, presentation sometimes um, or barely scripted featuring the conceptual and the stylistic inspiration behind our painting webinars we do a painting webinar a week and we use this um, episodes as introduction of the painting uh, webinar so then we don't lose time painting <laughs> waste time painting so um, yeah, what we do is we introduce the um, we introduce the painting webinar um, and we uh, talk about the references, historical references, um, art history references, and we add a bit of uh, commentary. Um, you can find all the episodes in a couple of places in uh, our Instagram account. If you're watching on YouTube, you we have them all archived there. So you can watch um, all of them for free. Um, so yeah, and um, so I'm gonna go ahead and present uh, the webinar. And also, um, if you have any questions, you can just um, go ahead and add them uh, below. Uh, or if there is anything you wanna contribute to, um, would be happy to um, to hear your input. So I'm gonna uh, introduce the first, uh, uh, yeah, uh, the first uh, slide. We're gonna paint pomegranates, and um, I wanted to talk about why we're gonna paint pomegranates. Uh, we had a very fun conversation the other day, <clears throat> and one of um, the painters, Lois, um, she said, "You know, we don't even know what time of the year it is," and um, it's true. Um, we hear about. Um, the East Coast, um, how the leaves are already turning color and they're falling and people are very excited and they have rain and they are they are wearing uh, sweaters. But in the West Coast and in Southern California, we're still um, a little bit behind. If it wasn't for the fact that the days are growing shorter, we would not know what time of the year it is except when you go to a grocery store and if you go to a grocery store uh, and depending on which uh, grocery stores you go to but um, if you go to a grocery store then you realize that the produce um, has changed um, so we know it's October because Trader Joe's has a bunch of pumpkins <laughs> And um, we also um, see very few, because uh, I don't think it's a very popular fruit, but um, um, in certain demographics, I would say, very few pomegranates and very few uh, persimmons. Uh, the three Ps, pumpkins, pomegranates, and persimmons. And we love the three fruits. We love the color. We love to eat them. We love to paint them. And uh, we thought that it would be nice after three weeks of doing portraits to remove ourselves from uh, that intensity uh, and find uh, stillness in uh, still life. Um, sorry to be redundant, but yeah, um, there's something about uh, painting a still life that's very meditative. And um, we, uh, we feel like after um, especially because of the, the intensity of this political time and what's going on, everyone's really uh, stressed. So I think we're ready uh, for some meditative time and we're gonna um, be contemplative and reflective and use a seasonal fruit, the pomegranate, as a still life. Uh, this is by Gustave uh, Coubert and it was painted in uh, late 1800s. Uh, pomegranates <clears throat> have been subjects in paintings for centuries 
Um, they originate from Persia and uh, northern India and you can see examples in artwork um, uh, throughout uh, art history essentially and um, so um, this one uh, turn of the century Gustave Coubert did a few pomegranates um, this one right here is by let me just uh, check um, this one right here, I think this is by Salvador Dali. I just wanted to triple check, uh, which uh, he uh, used. Um, yeah, Salvador Dali uh, painted this still life. I wasn't familiar. We were not familiar with this, um, with this uh, painting of Salvador Dali. But um, yeah, we love the reflection on the uh, glass. It seems, and uh, with um, uh, pomegranates, um, we. Uh, have to think about composition and also the fact that the color the bright color is inside so you can see pomegranate still lifes with just the fruit pomegranate still lifes uh, with the fruit being open we love the texture the color and the composition that we can achieve by bringing one two combining them with other objects and speaking of Salvador Dali um, he has this painting um, titled Dream Caused by the Flight of a Bee Around a Pomegranate a Second Before Awakening. That's the title of this famous painting. Uh, we've seen this, I think it's in the Pompidou in Paris. Um, we've seen this painting before. It's not very big. And there is a pomegranate on below uh, uh, towards the bottom side of the painting. And then there is a pomegranate right on the edge. And from the pomegranate, there's a fish that comes out. And uh, from the, I think it's a fish, from the fish, there are a couple of tigers. So um, we love that Salvador Dali went from um, classic and traditional to um, create a very surrealistic uh, composition. Uh, another uh, famous, um, Another famous pomegranate painting, uh, Matisse uh, created this composition. I uh, forgot the year that this was painted, uh, but yeah, this is uh, Matisse, uh, 1947, L Still Life with Pomegranates. And I love the fact that the red is not in the pomegranate, it's outside, uh, on the table, on the chair, on the curtain, on uh, the shutter, um, and of course, um, I personally love palm trees. It's nice to see um, there is this beautiful palm tree uh, through the window. So different style. We're all about analyzing or um, viewing uh, examples uh, throughout art history uh, of a, um, a subject and see how different artists have treated it with uh, different styles. Um, so this is very fav. Um, I also love this John Singer Sargent painting. Of course, John Singer Sargent, um, what do you expect? It's just uh, bananas. Uh, well, in this case, it's pomegranates. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, this one is pomegranate and it's uh, pomegranate Mallorca. So uh, we were not familiar um, to the fact that um, uh, John Singer Sargent, uh, Sargent maybe spent some time in Mallorca. We have to figure that out and see what was that about. Uh, 1908, um, a beautiful, um, almost photographic image, uh, just as he does it uh, on the tree. Another example of a different kind of composition. Um, and I'll just bring also um, Calder did one of uh, his kinetic sculptures. This one is titled Pomegranate. Um, and you can see the silhouette of the fruit. Yeah, it's, it's titled Pomegranate, 1949. Uh, we've never seen this before, uh, but we thought it was really cute. The fact that the subject um, was uh, used by different artists with different uh, media uh, to create uh, artwork. Um, I'm just gonna bring also another one. Um, this artist, uh, this is more recent. Um, yeah, 20th, uh, 20th century. Um, the name of the artist Ion Pasea or Ion, uh, yeah, I, Ion Pasea. Uh, he's a Greek artist. He was a Greek artist. And we brought it because um, it's also a very good example of a Fauvist way to um, 
uh, recreate or use the subject of a pomegranate in a painting. Um, so as as you can see, we go from uh, John Singer Sargent, Sargent to uh, something like um, Matisse or this uh, Greek uh, painter that's more uh, fauve-like, um, simplified, but still uh, extremely uh, beautiful. And uh, I want to bring two paintings because we were uh, uh, researching uh, this subject. We discovered an Amer American artist um, that we didn't know about and now we are completely obsessed with. Um, his name was Morris Graves. Morris Graves. Uh, 1910 uh, and uh, until 2001, he passed away in 2001. He was um, known um, for being uh, the first uh, renowned uh, artist uh, from the Bay Area School of Painting. Uh, we know of David Park, and but uh, apparently uh, Morris uh, Graves came before that. And um, his paintings are delicate, and um, beautiful and uh, we learned that he incorporated um, aesthetics and combined it with philosophy. Um, he uh, studied uh, Zen culture and he was aware of uh, or he wanted to explore the nature of consciousness and um, also uh, the definition of beauty and most of the time his paintings were a combination of um, his love for nature and the fact that nature provided that uh, trans transcendental transcendental uh, no transcendental state of mind um, that, he, that he needed to create um, we read about um, his biography and um, there are certain things that I want to point out there is a uh, uh, Morris Graves Foundation uh, in Northern California, California, in a town uh, called Lolera, Lolera, Lo, yes, L Lolera, I think, yes. Um, he in 1940 he built a house um, and called it the Rock, in an isolated uh, hill in uh, Fidalgo uh, Island uh, off the coast of of Seattle, I believe. And he lived there with a bunch of cats and dogs, and he called each of them uh, Edith, um, in honor of poet Edith uh, Sitwell. I just have to say that because I love picturing him calling um, all the animals the same name, Edith. Um, anyhow, my favorite painting of all, it's this one of his, uh, Morris Graves. It's titled only uh, or solely still life, but I love the fact that um, it's um, three pieces, three lonely pieces of fruit. Um, Morris Graves um, lived uh, most of his life in isolation. Um, so I love the fact that there is a very neutral, um, there is a very neutral uh, palette on the background and the fruits, the pomegranates are uh, painted so delicately, so softly. There's not a huge amount of paint or texture uh, you cannot view this and think excess or exuberance. It's simplicity, uh, quietness, stillness, uh, calm um, feelings and emotions. And that's what we are going um, for on this um, webinar. And um, the webinar is tomorrow, Friday. Uh, and every level is welcome. It's 20 bucks. We provide feedback. We have a private uh, shared folder where we can upload our progress. Uh, we have a little discussion after the session, a follow-up bonus um, the following week, a roof listening colloquium with a free tutorial if you register. Um, so there's a lot of goodness um, when you register. Uh, it's on our website already. And uh, I think that's it. And just a quick announcement. Not this Saturday. The next uh, Saturday, the 17th, we're going to be at Forest Lawn Memorial Park painting under the California live oak tree. Uh, an incredible, incredible, majestic um, being. And it just you can just feel the positive ions. Um, 
positive ions or negative ions? Which ones are the good ones uh, below the tree? So please, it's on the website also, register for that. It's gonna be two hours outdoors. Uh, the, the, the last time we were there, the easels were at least 12 feet apart. So we wear masks and it's totally safe, or I would say uh, there is no or very little risk. <laughs> But yeah, uh, Saturday the 17th, join us tomorrow for pomegranates. Bye.